welcome back to the second week of my video blog. I'm uh, safely back in Denmark after traveling the German-speaking world the last week. Um, so what have I been up to? Well, first of all, I started um, on Monday with meeting a couple of researchers from the Max Planck Institute for Human Development. This place is, amongst other things, a hotspot for what is called adaptive heuristics. Uh, it's a quite neat concept on how we can make um, decisions with limited information where I want actually to move my PhD. So I met those guys last summer when I was there for a summer school and we found that we have some overlapping research interests so now I'm planning to write a couple of articles together with them which is pretty neat because they're very good in their field so quite awesome for me. Uh, also having this international collaborations is something that DTU really pushes you to have so you can say it's actually a mandatory requirement when you do um, a PhD here that you have um, some external stay where you collaborate with other researchers in other uh, research institutions abroad so this is really push which I think is quite neat because especially if you want to follow up on uh, academic career building up this network this international collaborations already during your PhD will serve you well the second part of my travel then brought me to Switzerland, where I participated and presented in a workshop of our industry partner. So my PhD is partially funded by a company, so I also have a couple of deliverables to them which are pro providing me training content and input in those kinds of events. But also it provides me with the opportunity to engage in a less formal way with the practitioners that my research is about. So I'm not only engage with them through research interviews, but I also build some more personal contacts with them to understand their issues, their challenges, their interests. And this will also, of course, inform my, uh, my research. And also it seems they quite appreciated the academic input that we brought to them. Also something other uh, very exciting happened in the past week. I got my first article out in print. So the first journal article where I'm main author, this is pretty exciting for me and um, yeah so I'm very glad and research is going well. <laughs> Alright so last week I told you a bit about how to get a PhD position here so today I will tell you a bit more about the resettling process. Um, when you move to Denmark especially when you move to Copenhagen there are two interlinked things that you need to be aware of that they will be a challenge. One is the obvious one is housing the second one is the so-called CPR number. The CPR number is in principle just a social security number, but in reality it is way more. So some people say that the CPR number is what defines you as a human being in Denmark because basically you can get nothing of the nitty-gritty administrative stuff done when you don't have a CPR number. So you will need it to open a bank account, and you will need it to get a mobile contract, you will need it to register your mail address. So all these things require a CPR number and in order to obtain a CPR number you need to prove that you have a permanent place to live so that you have a place to live where you can stay for at least three months. So you see there might be a little vicious circle there um, but not having a CPR number is not the only thing that makes uh, finding a place to stay a little bit difficult. Um, it's also that as you might know Copenhagen is a very fierce uh, housing market maybe not as bad as London but still pretty bad so rents are quite expensive. You can expect to pay somewhere between 400 and 700 pounds for a smallish room in shared living, not even talking about getting your own flat. Uh, and also the competition is very high. So for the affordable and good rooms and good locations, you can expect dozens of other applicants because of course everybody wants those cheap and well-located places. So be prepared to bring time and nerves for your, um, for your room hunt. Uh, if you're a little bit flexible on where you want to live, where you can accept to live, that makes things easier. Not easy as such, but at least easier. There are other um, little towns around Copenhagen that have less competition, maybe. Also, if you have a little bit of extra cash, that definitely also makes the deal a little bit sweeter. And where to find those places, actually? Um, so DTU does offer um, a housing service but they have very very few listings so it definitely makes sense to go and look at all these other web pages where they list accommodation as well and especially if you look for shared apartments then there are a couple of facebook groups around which you would like to check out to find shared rooms that help
I finally I have three tips for you uh, once you are on the room hunt that you might want to consider. First of all, try to be on site. I was one of the very few lucky ones who actually scored a first semi-permanent place from abroad, but usually most people um, get only lucky once they are here because of course the landlords or your potential roommates, they prefer to meet you in person to make the decision. Um, also there are a lot of scams out there, so you can avoid that if you actually can go to the place, see the place, speak to the people, so be on site. The second tip is don't try to find anything in February or in September. This is where the semester starts and the housing market just goes entirely crazy. So the other months are much more relaxed to some degree at least. And third and most importantly, I already told you, you will need the CPR number, but many landlords prefer to rent out without giving you a proper lease contract because they try to avoid taxes and uh, so you would not be able to get the CPR registration. So whenever you look for a place, make sure that it offers CPR registration, so that you get a proper lease contract and uh, then we'll be able to, to register as well. Also, this practice of not giving your contract is obviously illegal, so you shouldn't get too much engaged with that. So these are my three tips. I hope they're in some way useful for you uh, once you move here. Um, next week I will tell you a little bit more about how then to get your PhD research started. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this little video blog and see you next week. Bye bye.